Welcome to People Love Process. Hand lettering doesn't have to be intimidating. In this movie, I'll show you how to progressively work out letter forms, craft a unique typographic motif, and demonstrate how you can put it to use in a final context as well. This is a fun one. Let's get started. You've probably heard the old adage, practice makes perfect. In design, it depends on your creative process, though, because if your process is flawed, it doesn't matter how often you practice it because you're just reinforcing bad creative habits. That's why I like to say process makes perfect. Improve your creative process and you'll improve your work. It's that simple. Now, this specific project started where a lot of them do, and that's inspiration. I teach in Hartford's uh, Master of Fine Arts program, uh, and they did a figure drawing night. And instead of figure drawing, I was doodling this. And because I had my hand lettering course to do, um, I kind of just drew out the word surf. I wasn't really thinking. When I when I'm doing doodles, it's just stream of conscious, but I kind of liked it. And when I got home and I'm looking at this, I'm going, I'm going to run with that and see where it leads. And so that's when I start doing uh, thumbnail drawing. And this is how drawing works. It's a progressive skill, meaning I take the genesis of an idea encapsulated in a doodle, and now I'm thumbnailing it to see if there's potential to move forward with it. And I really like these thick letter forms, and I want to add some kind of waveform on the top. So that's what these thumbnails are. This is obviously a lot bigger than they were. Each was about an inch and a quarter wide. Uh, I'll continue to do a rough sketch trying to figure out how to style the, the large, fat, beefy letter forms, how to compose a wave graphic on top of that. I keep exploring. I decide maybe that waveform should be bigger. And when I did this, I'm going, yeah, that looks really good. Uh, redrew the R, redrew the F, and I think those look better too. Uh, decided maybe I could put a figure of a surfer in there, decide not to do that. So uh, that's one of those lost ideas that will forever just be encapsulated in a sketch, but never go any further. I'll tighten it up a bit working out these letter forms, trying to make it read even better. I really like the engagement of the wave with the top of the S, U, and the R, and it's fitting in nicely to the type, so I like that. Um, I decided at this point, maybe an outside host shape will hold everything together. And I really like that. So I'm definitely going to be doing that. So these are the type of things you want to explore and try different things. Um, I wasn't completely sure about the type with these serifs. So when I moved to re my refined sketch stage of drawing with a mechanical pencil, that's when I started looking at those serifs I had in my previous iteration and decided to simplify it even more and make it cleaner, remove those serifs, add some nice curves to the R, which I really like now. And so I scan this in with my flatbed scanner. And now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the opacity to 15%, lock the layer. And we're going to build one of these letter forms uh, on this layer. And since S is the hardest, we're going to start with the S shape here, and I'm going to go ahead and build this. Wherever it comes to a point, gets a point. These are easy to discern. Where it goes into a curve, this is where we'll have to decide where to place uh, the apex of this curve. And I think here would work pretty good. We'll do that. And we'll go into this area. Now, this is where it gets flat. And I should point out, if I hover over a path or over an anchor, you can see it's saying that. And at times, smart guides will want to snap to one another. So you might want to uh, toggle it off, command U, uh, before you start building. So that's what I did there. So now if I hover, it won't detect if it's a path or an anchor. And it makes building uh, this kind of freeform building a lot easier if you do that, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to place another one here since it kind of gets into a straight area. And we'll just pull out the uh, handles far enough to see them. And now here's something you might not be aware about the pin tool. It's a hidden feature. I don't even like saying hidden. It's just never spoken about because I use 
uh, Illustrator for 18 years, and two years ago on Twitter, um, I invited an Adobe engineer by the name of Niraj into the conversation. I said, hey, share with us some AI tips that, that you know about that other people might be interested in. Uh, well, I want to share with you the space tip. And I go, what's that? And he showed it. And it's this. Let's say you're building and you get to this point and you start pulling out your handles and you realize, ah, oh, that's not where I should have had the anchor point. Well, guess what? If you didn't know this tip, you just release, go command Z and try it again, put it where you want it to go. That's how everybody does it. But Let's say you have it in the wrong position. You realize it. Well, don't release the button on your mouse. Um, just push down the space bar with your opposing hand, and then you can move this anywhere you want without breaking the continuity of building. So we'll place it where it should go, release the space bar, and now we can continue building. And I was like, my... my <laughs> When he showed this, my jaw just dropped. I'm going, are you kidding me? I've been using Illustrator for 18 years and I didn't know that. Actually, everybody following that thread was uh, following that thread on Twitter is going, what? You know, so uh, there you go. So now that you know it, now you can use it. We're just going to keep uh, placing our anchor points. So once again, just to reinforce what I just showed you, let's say you decide to put it up here and you go, oh, that's not the right one. Well, don't release the button. Push down on the on the space bar and reassociate it where it should be, let go of the space bar, keep adjusting however you want, and then you can close out this path like that. So um, that functionality, actually try the space bar with other, um, other tools. It does similar things in other tools. So, uh, and I didn't know those either. So uh, take the time to experiment and take the time to talk to people who know more about it than you do, because that's how I learn a lot of things. So we're just going to take the anchor point tool just so I can get access to these uh, Bezier handles. Oops. Like that. And you want to make sure that you're using like uh, the select tool to grab a handle. If you use the, the anchor point tool for a handle, it'll kind of break it. So I, I, it's kind of frustrating that way. So if you hold option down and you grab it, let's say you have the anchor point tool and you hover over the ankle, the handle control, hold option down, you can then manipulate it, but then let go of option and then it goes back to that, uh, that um, anchor point tool. So just wanted to point that out. Let's grab this one and pull it out a little bit just to get access to these handles. Nothing should be straight here. So I'm going to add some slight curves in these like that. We'll go ahead and do this. Pull that down to get those curves. And we'll pull this out to get that curb. And this should be straight here. Pull this over. We'll adjust that. So now we're just finessing all of our Bezier handles to get the look and feel we want. I think we have to adjust this one. Might even bump that up a little bit with the nudge tool or the nudge key on the keyboard like that. And this is where I'll just look at everything and see if it looks right. Now, I want to show you one really quick, uh, a preference setting under selection anchor points. It's show handles when multiple anchors are selected. I suggest you turn that on because the nice thing about it, if you select all your handles on a path, it'll show you how those handles are working. And this can help you figure out where you need to make adjustment if something looks too flat or if it doesn't look elegant like here. I think this one could go up. A little bit like that and it'll just help you to discern uh, and beautify uh, those elegant curves like on this one here I think this is a little too flat so I would adjust this one down like that 
but take your time. Don't rush it uh, and just finesse those. The more you do this, the easier it's going to become. Um, you're never going to be perfect with it. So the more you do it, the more you practice, the better your skill is going to be at creating precise vectors. So let's take a look at these shapes because these are all our final forms. Now, I created this little wedge shape because I want the S to overlap the U, but I want the background to kind of cut into this wedge shape. So we're going to take that with the U, go to Pathfinder, go minus front. So that way, once all these letters are fused together, the background outline we're going to end up putting on this is going to be a darker color and it will show through this little wedge. Now we're gonna turn on these elliptical shapes because these are what I made these forms with. We're gonna take this waveform here and I'm gonna go ahead and go to path and we're gonna to go to offset path like that. And we're gonna to go to 10 and offset it by 10. We're gonna make a couple, uh, let's make sure it's on the layer of the ellipse. We'll make a copy of it, Command C, Command F, just so you can see I'm doing. We'll color it yellow, select this elliptical shape, trim that edge off the elliptical shape, select this, we'll color it yellow, select the U, and we're gonna trim the top of the U so the profile flows with the bottom of the wave. We're gonna take this shape, we'll do the same offset setting like that. This is above this elliptical shape, and we'll just minus front to get all those shapes. So thinking in shapes is gonna help you. Uh, when it comes to uh, a drip like this, this is where I'll just create an oval initially. I'll select this anchor point, go to corner, turn it to a corner anchor point, reposition this anchor, go to the anchor point tool, and then I can pull out to get access to this Bezier handle, and then pull this side to get access to that. I might go in here and finesse these because it doesn't have to be a perfect circular shape since it's a drip. And that's how I usually will create a drip shape like that as I start with elliptical shape just because it's easier. Now, I like to save shapes as I go along because I know I might use them. And in this case, I knew I was going to create this offset. So all of these shapes I made, these are still in their original format, but this U isn't. So that's why I save shapes. And we're just going to go ahead and turn on this layer here. And you can see I have all the original shapes as shown here, and I'm going to use these to create offsets. So if I turn on this offset shapes, you can see we've offset these drips, this part of the, the wave, and we just need to do these parts and this drip, and we need to offset this. So all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to path. We're going to go to offset. The tolerance we're using here is 17 and we'll go okay. So now all we've done is we've taken this shape here and we've offset it from the interior shape that we created here. Just so you can see what I'm doing, let's go ahead and take these and colorize them the same blue color because these are all making up the offset shape. But I'm gonna zoom in here because notice how it terminates here. I want it to go into this shape. And I'm gonna show you a plugin for no other reason than it's very useful. I don't use it every day because I don't need it every day, but first we're gonna use the scissor tool to cut that. And we're gonna go down here and notice this is kind of truncating here as well. So we're gonna cut that there and we're gonna take this shape over here and we'll cut that, select that path and delete it. Now, why am I doing that? Because I want to show you a plugin called the Extend Path plugin, part of Astute Graphics Vector Scribe. Uh, Vector Scribe is the plugin. It's one of the tools called Extend Path Tool. It's this one. We're going to go to the end, and it remembers the geometry in the path and just allows you to extend it into this other shape, which we want. We can grab the pen tool. Now we can close that shape. That's resolved. We're going to go up here and do the same thing with the extend tool and bring that in like that. Then we'll go ahead and select these with the pen tool and close that shape. So that's everything we need now. We have this wave shape, this wave shape, this one. 
these two drop shapes, and then the S, the R, the U, and the S. All of these are selected, ready to unite. We'll unite them with the Pathfinder. Double click into isolation mode, Command A to select everything. Let uh, Deselect the outside shape and just delete the inner, um, uh, the inner artifacts. And now we have everything needed uh, to create our final artwork. So if we look at our base vector shapes, this is what we end up with. Our tonal family for this design is going to be base like this, and this is going to be uh, a lot of fun. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take uh, the surf shape here, and we're going to color that white. So it's going to disappear for a little bit because the background is going to be this dark blue, and we're going to color this, the uh, the medium blue color here and these uh, shades of blue are getting progressively lighter like that we'll reuse some of the colors like that one here and the medium color here and I think that looks uh, pretty good actually this is the wrong color this should be that color blue not turquoise there we go so I think that's looking pretty good now, one thing that I do is I like to experiment to see if I can uh, uh, do anything a little different. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this layer, and this is just a path, and I'm going to select this path. It's the magenta color we've been using. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my brushes. Now, if you don't have your brushes palette open, just go to brushes. And that will open up, oh, I have it down here almost off screen. That's why I couldn't see it. So we're going to bring that up here. And you can see I only have a couple brushes in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this organic shader brush to this path. So when I do that, boom, that's what you're going to get. Right now, the size of it is based off of one. I'm going to go to a two-point size. I think that looks fine. Uh, I might even go a little smaller than that, maybe one point seven five something like that yeah i think i like that better and now to control the brush color uh we can also um apply any other color we want to it in this case i think since surf is tends to be kind of aquatic in color we're going to apply this color to it and i think that looks pretty cool now this is a brush um if i'm delivering this art i wouldn't leave it uh, in this format as a live brush, I would expand it. In which case we go to object, we go expand, and now it turns it into vector shapes. But the way a pattern brush works is it just repeats one pattern to the next pattern. So I go into isolation mode and I'll purposely overlap these two, then I'll select them and then I'll unite them so it becomes one, uh, one type of shape. If I go to appearance, it's gonna be a group so I want to go ahead and turn this into a compound because I need to edit the shape further. And the easiest way to do this, I found, is just double click into isolation mode, select these anchors at the bottom here, because notice you see areas of the type at the bottom and we want all of that covered. So I'm just going to pull these down further like that. Oops, let's do that again like that double click out of it. I'm going to turn on this layer and this is an inset that I did on the letter forms. So I'm going to select that. Notice it's a compound. Select this. This is a compound with both of these shapes selected. I'm going to use intersect on Pathfinder and it's going to create that inner shape where they two overlap and it's going to default to a group. So I always turn it to a compound we're going to get rid of the outline and recolor it, this aqua color. And I think that looks pretty fabulous. So uh, that's how you could use brushes in a hand lettering design like this. Now, when I'm creating, I like to experiment a lot and try different things. So if I turn this on, here's one where I just turned it to a blue color. And I like this equally as well. So it just depends on what your preference is. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do once you have typography like this uh, to create different type of usages and formats of the same motif. So if I turn on this, check out all these formats. We have the original one we did with the aqua color, then the light blue. This one down here I tried in the kind of the sandy color. Because we have the offset 
uh, kind of host shape, it works really great in one color on a dark background, or you get rid of that host shape and it still works really well as one color, in this case, white knocked out of a dark background. And then down below, we can even offset the host shape and put a white outline around it. So a lot of ways you can handle this. Now, as I'm going, I usually have a layer in my file called X, and that's where I save stuff as I build and as I develop. And if I turn this on, you can see here's a lot of my build content as I went through this. And I actually save these uh, uh, layers in my build file. This technically isn't my build file. I clean this up to uh, present it to you in a, in a nice package such as this movie. But I just wanted to show you that really quick. So let's take a look at a couple usages of this. And you could totally see how this could be used in a publication like Surf Magazine uh, could use this. It goes really well with this photograph. Here's another cool one, utilizing kind of that aqua color that you see in surf pictures. So that goes really well. Here's another one where it's just a one color on a colored background. The guy's riding the tube of the, the wave. That looks pretty cool. And here's another way you can use it. If you go to the eyedropper tool and you sample, in this case, a background color, maybe it's one of the darker blues. Uh, that may be a little too dark. Let's do that. That looks pretty good. And we go to color. You can see what this is. This is where I'll usually go in and... I think on this one, I'll just round down. So I try to give non-fractional numbers. Yellow, I think we're going to go to 15 and I'll go to five because I want it a little dark. Once I have that, I can drag it into my palette like this. I'll go in, I'll change it to a global color and we'll go ahead and click OK because if I select this type now, what I can do is I can go to the appearance palette and I can add an effect to it. Or with it selected, I can go up to effects here and go stylize and I can go uh, outer glow and it's going to default uh, to screen. So I'm going to turn it to multiply. We're going to change the color to the color we just, uh, we just selected, which is this one like that. And I'm going to apply that color to it. And then I probably want this a little darker. So we'll go 85 and we'll go seven here and we'll go preview. See what that looks like, like that. And it just helps push that type off the background. Now, if I don't think this is dark enough, I don't even have to touch this because it's the global color. I can go back in and I decide, you know, this is going to be more, uh, prominent if we put more black into it and I'm going to click this and you can see how it adjusts the color automatically and I think that looks pretty cool make a good uh, two-page layout in the surf magazine in my opinion here's another one where we take a design like this and this is an example where I would click on this type isolate a part and I'd pull an element out of the photo, in this case, the color of this surfboard, and it'd work really well in this context as well. So once you have a hand lettering design created, there are a lot of different things you can create with it, a layout, t-shirt, stickers, even more. And the one thing I want to point out though, is the progressive process of drawing. Uh, don't just draw something out quick, jump into Illustrator and try to build it. Really struggle with it. Really work with it. Take the time to set it aside so you can come back to it with fresh eyes and analyze it and improve it. And as you build it, as you craft it, as you create it in vector form, always be willing to scrutinize your own work because nobody is going to uh, pay attention to your work more than you are. So you need to be doing that. You might not think you can pull off a design like this, but I assure you, the more you practice hand lettering, the easier it gets. And along the way, you'll discover your own unique creative voice as well. And that's when it gets fun. So figure out a word you'd like to work with and do some experimentation. Remember, you need no other excuse other than to be creative. Eventually, It'll become a new creative skill you can leverage in client projects when the need arises as well. So it's well worth your investment of time. If you like this movie, please share a link to my YouTube channel on social media. That always helps us. 
And if you haven't already, like and subscribe as well. Thank you for watching People Love Process. I really do appreciate it. I hope this content helps you improve your own creative process.